If you want to build production ready workflows with NIN, let me show you how to secure your webhooks. So there's actually three layers of security in NIN. You have the server security, webhook security, and workflow security. So let's look at server security. So server security starts with how you self-host NIN. The best way to do this is to have an NIN container, and then a separate security guard for all the inbound internet traffic. In this case, we're using Caddy. The idea is as external internet traffic wants to access your NIN, it first has to go into Caddy. Caddy will then authenticate it and verify that it's safe, and then send it across to your NIN. You can set up Caddy in your YAML file when you're self-hosting using Docker. You expose these ports to the internet and then you only make this port in NAN visible to Caddy. Your next layer of security is at the webhook level. When you're setting up your webhook configuration, you actually have multiple options for setting authentication. This is the same thing like putting a password on your webhook. Without the password, the actual API call cannot get in. And now finally, we have security at the workflow level. So assuming that someone actually has the password to get into your webhook, it goes into the next stage. These three nodes are used to authenticate that the sender and the payload have not been tampered with. Services like Stripe, GitHub, Twilio, or even Zendesk all use a signature method. If you add this to your workflow, in combination with your webhook password and add a signature password, your workflow will be so much more secure. Next, you can use simple if notes to actually validate things like the payload. For example, if the format isn't correct, or if you're not expecting this specific data to be sent to you, you actually want to terminate the workflow and not process it, which will help you save API costs, avoid customer issues, and make sure your database remains clean. You can also use the if node to check if the time taken to receive the API call was not too long, or to check if you've actually processed this specific event already. For example, imagine Stripe tells you to bill someone and then by accident resends that API call. Instead of you billing them twice, you just cancel the second API call. And don't forget that your fail routes should always be logged so that you can mitigate the risk from occurring next time. If you want to see a detailed breakdown of how to implement this for your own workflows, comment webhooks and I'll send you a link to the video. See you in the next one.